Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2023 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Founder and Festival Director, in conversation with Leighton Blaylock while we discuss his film, Community First, A Home for the Homeless. All the information about all of our upcoming programming is available on peacefilmfest.org. Let's now welcome Leighton. How are you? This is an encore presentation of this wonderful film. So thank you for joining us again. Well, I, I, I'm honored to, to have been invited. Uh, thank you very much. I, uh, I've had two films at your festival now, and I have uh, was just thrilled to, to have been in, um, accepted at both times and able to um, attend both times. And um, uh, I just, uh, it was great. The whole experience was just fantastic. And I thank you all very much. And we echo that. We had a great time with you. We're, we were so happy that you could come with both of your films, uh, which are both very much worth uh, seeking out. Um, so we'll give information about how to do that at the end. And uh, the first film that we had, which we're not, um, uh, Talking, we're not programming in the in the uh, virtual festival, but um, but we loved. It's called Art in the Streets, and what we are programming in the virtual festival this year is is Community First, Ho a Home for the Homeless. If you could just tell us about the film, we'll take it from there. Okay, so um, Community First Village is a um, master planned community here in Austin, Texas um for homeless people uh it's a um and my documentary is about this village which is um now 51 acres of um tiny homes and um rvs and uh, they have soft-sided cottages which are like tents but they're all um uh furnished and um people that have been living on the streets uh, move in there and it's permanent housing. It's, this is not a shelter. This isn't temporary. This is permanent housing for people that have been living on the streets. Um, they have, you know, pretty strict requirements for how you're accepted to get in. Um, you know, right now we have over 3000 people that, that live on the streets in Austin, Texas. And um, currently there's, close to four or 500 people now living out at Community First Village. So you, as you can imagine, there's like a, a waiting list to get in. But uh, the amazing thing about this particular master planned community is um, they provide uh, micro enterprises there for people to make a um, um, dignified income, as they call it. Um, there are uh, gardens uh that where they raise lots and lots of vegetables uh chickens for eggs um that and they have a um they have a um a farmers market just for the residents uh every every saturday um there is a uh an amphitheater out there with a beautiful cinema that the Alamo Draft House put in, and I, I know some sections of the country would be familiar with Alamo Draft House. Um, it's a really beautiful place, uh, this amphitheater. They it's they also have a bed and breakfast there, and it, all of these various things that they have, and there's a whole list of them. I, I couldn't even go through all of them, but um, the residents are allowed to work, uh, you know, doing all of the maintenance or whatever is involved in running a business like that. And, um, and, you know, they are able to pay uh, their rent because they're, they, they do pay rent that it, it's not free housing, um, but it is permanent housing. And um, so that's kind of the, the, the gist of it. It's a real community is the main thing. It is a real community. And Layton, if I remember correctly, um, from the first time that I had seen your wonderful documentary, that, that, um, that phrase community first from the gentleman who who started this particular community um it, it it's really central to his philosophy that he didn't feel that the problem 
necessarily of, of people who were unhoused was their lack of shelter, but actually their lack of community. Is that correct? That, absolutely. In fact, he says uh, on a regular basis and uh, in the film that housing will never solve homelessness, but community will. And they named this place Community First exclamation mark village, Community First Village, uh, because they wanted to emphasize that this is a community and that community is first, <laughs> sort of in making um, a village, you know. And um, it's proven to be such an amazingly successful, uh, you know, development. It's just, uh, it, it's, I mean, I couldn't adequately explain how uh, successful this place has been. They they started building out there. Um, well, they started clearing some land in 2014, started uh, building some houses out there in 2015. There were just a handful of residents living out there in 2015. But 2016, it was starting to kind of get going and really fleshing out. 2017, um, there were uh, close to 200 people living there, and it's just sort of expanded from there. The my film, which was shot in 2017, um, uh, they, they were just on phase one, which was 23 acres. Uh, they have now uh, almost completely built out phase two, which is the entirety of it right now, which is 51 acres. They have, uh, this year, they broke ground on the 71 acres across the street from them. So now they're getting ready to have over 120 acres um, for this play. I mean, it's 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 um, it's just incredible. I mean, I, I would encourage people to watch the film to see what an incredible place this is. Uh, and and of course, being there in person um, is even more interesting and and um, uh, more impactful because it's just it's really really a beautiful place. Well, and another thing that I remember from the film, you know, talking about. Uh, some of the reasons why people are homeless. Um, uh, I seem to recall that a number of the people that you interviewed and, and sort of the special community that is built around them were people who were suffering from trauma and were having a very difficult time managing uh, in a world that, that, had, um, that, that didn't have enough understanding or enough empathy or enough room in, you know, uh, to welcome those, those kinds of people. And, and oftentimes that was why they, they kind of fell into hard times, as opposed to say, people who are just frozen out of, um, out of the housing market because of rising costs. Yeah, I mean, I think for the most part, uh, the, your first uh, description is kind of, people living on the streets in a nutshell, you know, I mean, some do, you know, I mean, there are people that live on the streets that do have jobs and they just simply can't afford a place to live. Uh, but there are, it seems to me uh, that the majority of them have just fallen through the cracks. They, you know, as, as Alan Graham, who is the gentleman who was the founder of um, the, there's actually a uh, nonprofit organization called Mobile Loaves and Fishes, which is the nonprofit that built Community First Village. Um, and Alan Graham is the CEO of Mobile Loaves and Fishes. Um, uh, he, he uh, how, I kind of lost my train of thought, unfortunately. Um, but he, the as he describes it, the people that they um, that are living there are it's well it's designed for people that have been living on the streets for at least a year or off and on for over three years and uh it's also for uh uh, uh individuals and the disabled so in other words their families don't live there um you know i mean there are some couples uh that have met on the streets that live there but for the most part, it's for single individuals that have been living on the streets for over a year, and um, and so uh, they. I mean, it's you know, it, it's hard to explain what it does to your psyche 
when you've been living on the streets like that for so long, you know, you just, your, your self-esteem is completely like gone and it's just survival mode. You know, every single minute of every single day, is just survival mode. There's, you have no time to ever just relax. Um, you know, like most of us that have homes, you know, we can go in, you can flop down on the bed and, and just relax. You know, they just don't have that opportunity because it's just a, constant uh, never ending challenge and um of course you know like i said that does a lot for your to your psyche it does a lot to your mental stability um even for people that are you know mentally strong which a lot of people living on the streets actually are you know i mean you almost have to be to survive oh fascinating um and and i remember um that one of the wonderful things that happened when you had the screening um, that ties into what the mission of the festival is, which is to, to give people models or frameworks that they can take into their own lives and their own communities. But there was a gentleman who had raised his hand in the audience to ask you a question uh, about how to bring this model to their community, not quite in Orlando, but they, they had been wrestling with what to do. And the idea of of looking at a small parcel of land, and um, and in this case, it was a mobile home uh, park that had fallen into the hands of of that uh, municipality. But it was like a big light bulb had gone off uh, over his head about there's another way to look at this, and there's another way to uh, to work with this. And so, could you speak to uh, you know? I'm sure that was not the only instance. Um, you know, where, where that kind of lightning struck while you were touring the film, um, you know, can you speak to, to those kinds of, you know, impacts? Yeah, you know, uh, I mean, fortunately, uh, there are uh, quite a few places around the country that have used this model now based on the community first model. I, I mean, um, I, I can't, <laughs> I can't give all the credit to my film. I hope that my film can take some of that credit, but Community First Village actually does a, a pretty good job of promoting themselves. They've been on CNN, they've been on NBC, you know, uh, they've been on uh, in Time Magazine, People Magazine. They've done a pretty good job of promoting themselves and they, and they have seminars where they invite people to come and stay like three or four days um, to see what they're you know how the model works so they they do a lot to educate people about it but as i cross the country um showing the film um uh you know people would ask that question uh frequently you know like well how do we get this started i mean this seems like it takes a lot of money which it does i mean you know you you, you don't start with a place like community first village i mean uh mobile and fishes started 25 years ago with with one truck going around the city handing out food and clothing to the people that were living in homeless camps around the city and they just kept building and growing and growing and they I think they've got at least a dozen or 15 different trucks they still do that and they still go out in the community and do that um but uh Alan always had this um uh, idea <laughs> of building a what he called an RV park on steroids, which is what Community First Village really is, I mean, on super steroids. But um, but before they even ever had any land to build on, they were were able to go around to various RV parks around the city and um, rent RVs for people that were unhoused and let them live there, you know? And so, you know, you, you start slowly and you build and you build and you build and you build. And I, I just try to impress upon, uh, press that uh, upon people because, you know, you see the film and you see this like beautiful, wonderful, phenomenal place that which obviously takes a lot of money to do, but you know, you don't start there. You got to start small and build up. And um, I, I've been fortunate enough to, to sort of see that seed grow in various communities around the country and um and even in Canada I, I mean I, there are several places in Canada that have um you know used this model I mean they've seen my film they've asked me to you know talk to them and um 
I've, I've had lots of uh, Zoom interactions with people across the country trying, trying to do this, uh, and, and as well as being able to show the film in person across the country. So, um, you know, thankfully, it has uh, has struck a nerve with some people, and it does, and it does enlighten them as to, like, you know, okay, this really can happen. You know, you really can do this, but it takes a lot of perseverance. <laughs> Indeed. And uh, one of the things that I remember from the film, and again, I, it's, I, uh, it, we haven't seen it for a long time, um, but one thing that struck me was the engagement of the, of the mobile loaves and fishes leadership who actually um, really live at community first and, and engage personally. And that that's one of the, you know, that's one of the things that really, um, uh, made it makes it even more um uh significant that it you know that really does talk to community first um so uh i i found i you know i we were both very moved by the film as was our entire as was our entire audience as we as we were with um art from the streets the first film that you showed at, at the global peace film festival so um can you talk a little bit about what people watching this uh can do to support your work and also what are you working on now um it, i i would be surprised if it's not something related to the same issue that that you've been covering for so so beautifully for so many years well thank you i appreciate that i, I did want to just before i get to that um i just wanted to address one other thing one one of the it, it, because it was uh it was based you know it's what you it's related to what you were just saying the um one of the formulas that makes uh community first village so amazingly successful is that they do have people that live there that have uh, never, you know, lived on the streets. I mean, they, they uh, I mean, there's about 20% of the population, they call them missional residents. And, um, you know, I mean, they're uh, like, they're, and I interview some, several of them in the film, but, but there's like, you know, nurses and doctors and um, the CEO of a tech company and his his wife and a professor at the University of Texas and his wife and two kids you know live there and I mean they encourage that and and it it um you know it helps to add a little bit of stability you know they're there to try to add support to the people that are coming off the streets but every one of them that you, you talked to said I've gotten as much out of it as I've given you know so I just wanted to add that it's it's uh I, I usually try to point that out that that's another one of the really uh, critical parts of the formula that makes that place so unique and successful. But um, to answer your question, I really am not working on anything else at the moment. Um, I've been um, I've really been pretty involved with uh, community first, uh, you know, going across the country, showing the film. Uh, the, of course, we went to festivals first, and then I started going to different conferences. And of course, the pandemic hit, and I was doing stuff online. Then I started going back to conferences once the pandemic kind of slowed down a little bit. So, um, and, and then we we got it licensed onto PBS, uh, and it's uh, as of a few months ago, it has aired over thirty five hundred times on PBS across the country. So, um, you know, uh, all of that sort of is pretty time consuming for me. And so um, I, I, I am still involved, as you, you know, indicated, but uh, not on another project at the moment. So um, yeah, that's kind of where that stands right now. Well, so how could anybody watching this today, who I, I hope seeks out this film, um, how can they support Community First Village? Well, so Community First Village has really an absolutely, uh, actually a very good website, and you can go there and just, you can just donate straight up money right there. I mean, they've got a donate button, just like a lot of other nonprofits. Um, if you live in the Austin area, if anybody happens to see this that lives in the Austin area, they're always looking for volunteers. I mean, they they have, you know, I you know, lots and lots of volunteers that are out there 
on any given day, you know, either working in landscaping or any one of the other enterprises that they have, uh, you know, maintenance or, or whatever it may be, um, people, uh, you know, uh, civic groups will like maybe uh, cook a lot of food and take it out there. They have a lot of open areas where, uh, well, I say open, they are open, but I mean like uh, pavilion type areas where people can go and um, provide food, you know, have like a big banquet sort of thing for the residents. You know, that kind of stuff happens all the time. And, and so if anybody is in the area or just wants to take a road trip and come down, you know, um, they're always looking for people to, um, and like I said, they have a bed and breakfast there. You can go and just rent a tiny home and live there on the village for however many days you feel like being there. So uh, they have um, um, uh, those kinds of options available too. And, and where? Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Where Where else in the country are there are there um, communities that have replicated what Community First in Austin has done? So the one that I'm very familiar with is is in a place called I'm not sure the pronunciation of the word. I think it's Tulare, California which is, I think, relatively close to Sacramento. Uh, I'm not positive on that, but it's kind of in the middle of the state, I believe. And um, there's a, a, a woman there, an organization there called Salt and Light, and they have, um, they have been working on this for several years, and they are getting very, very close uh, to having, uh, you know, starting building tiny homes, and they're already starting with, you know, social activities and um, other uh, support, you know, groups to help with this, uh, uh, with people that are unhoused. Um, and then there's lots of little places, like I know of two or three different places in Oregon. I know of two or three different places in Washington State, um, some other places in California that are on a much smaller scale, but that have put in, and, and as I mentioned in Canada, I know there's other, there's places in Canada too, um, some near Ontario um, and some in the Pacific Northwest that um, have, you know, there's so many different ways, like people can get very inventive, you know, when they think about this. And like, I know, for example, one, um, you know, they, uh, one group was able to go to a, a church that just had a lot of open land in this town. And they, you know, were able to build these tiny homes on the property and the church was happy to have them there because they had plenty of space for them, you know, and then they try to provide, you know, other um, social support mechanisms for them too. you know, community first is kind of on a whole different level, all its own, but, um, but there are quite a few other places. And I know there's bound to be others that I don't even know about, you know. Well, support and community seem to be the, the big bywords, you know, for, for tackling this issue. Yeah. Um, and so we really appreciate, you know, even your first film, Art from the Streets, um, wasn't there one person from your first film that ended up uh, moving into the community first? Yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one, so Art from the Streets, uh, just quickly, is about a art program uh, for homeless people here in Austin. Um, it's just a grass run by a small volunteer grassroots organization. They provide a space and, a, and supplies for homeless people to come in and create art. And at the end of the year, they have a big show and sale and they sell the art and all the proceeds go back to the artist. Uh, that was a film that I did that aired at, uh, screened at, um, uh, the Global Peace Film Festival. And, uh, I told that story by featuring five of the artists that were involved in that. And one of those artists does live at Community First Village. There's actually several uh, now that were involved, uh, that are involved with Art from the Streets that are living out at Community First Village. But Penny was the first one that I knew of. Uh, she got housed out at Community First Village in 2016. And um, I got this wonderful call one day from Penny. And she said, you're not going to believe where I am. And I said, where? And she said, I'm living at Community First Village. And she was like, you know, just over the top excited about it. And, and so she's, yeah, you see her in my film. She's featured in Community First as well. Well, um, 
you know, I certainly want everyone to uh, watch Community First as a part of our programming, but I also want people to seek out Art from the Streets because the artwork is astounding. Um, and, you know, people will really get so much out of, I think what they'll get is, is what we're always trying to, to express is, is to not look at, um, at someone as, as the other or an object, but instead to, to always remind yourself of the humanity and the potential in everyone and Art from the Streets really and Community First really do a wonderful job of highlighting that. So thank you for your, your work, Leighton. It's amazing. Well, it's amazing. Thank you. I, I really appreciate you uh, shining a light on it. Thank you. And thank you to everyone who has watched this conversation. Again, we really urge you to uh, seek out Community First, a home for the homeless as a part of our upcoming 2023 programming. It will be uh, available during our virtual program, which begins September the 25th and runs through October the 1st. All the information about our programming, live and virtual, can be found on our website, peacefilmfest.org. Please also seek out Layton's uh, website, laytonblaylock.com, and also just type into your browser, Community First or Mobile Loaves and Fishes, to find out more information if you'd like to follow up. Uh, with that organization. And again, thank you for listening and we will see you at the next GLOW. Thank you.